Okay, we're back for part two of this tutorial. We're going to build a texture in Photoshop today. I've got some images loaded up here that we're going to use. I'm going to open the reference photo. Oh, my first pass at this. This is what we exported from Blender, the PNG that has the UV layout. And we're just going to start cutting and pasting from the image files into this texture file, and that's what we're going to apply to our model. The first thing we're going to do here is grab some of this yellow and black texture to make the uh, shroud. I'm just cutting a rectangle, copying it and pasting it. Delete the white bars. And I'm going to duplicate this and tile it once to the right to make it twice as wide. With duplicate layer. We can just use the crosshair arrow to drag it over. Especially if I pay attention and don't drag it off the side of the screen. We'll zoom in and adjust our gap. It's not awful there, but I'm going to delete the gray bar. I'm going to make sure we're lined up perfectly. Or I'm going to do those two things in the opposite order. Does again record audio for this after I've made a video. Some magic wand here to uh, select the gray bar. Tap and delete. That should work great. And we'll just slide it over one full bit there until it lines up good enough for our purposes. A little clone stamp to blend the edge. I'm going to select the two layers and merge them. And for some reason, that's not, I was certain that there was a right click to rename option in Photoshop, and there is not. You double click the, the name of the layer. Give you a descriptive name, and drag it in place. Line it up to make sure it covers completely the uh, UV guides there. Done with that, so we move on to our next texture. Here's a random rusty metal y tile -y thing that I'm going to use for the top of the can. There's really no time when you should see the top of the can in flight because it's always going to have a uh, cabin of some sort on top of it by design, but you know, it's still nice to put something there. Would be a great place to leave woody messages. I'm not going to use that grungy texture just yet. I'm going to work on the sides first. Copying and pasting this whole texture in. I'm going to shrink it down to cover the whole flat side. I always want to bleed over just a little bit. It's way better to bleed over the edges of those UV lines than to go under and have a bar of white or a bar of something repeats or just in general pixels where you aren't in control of what the texture looks like and just accepting whatever the texture gods give you. I'm going to cut one of these four panels out and drag that up to use on the uh, Raised panels, the panels that come out to little points for RCS mounting. Let it transform scale. Oh, I'm duplicating the layer first because I have a clever idea in mind. Bring that out to cover the whole side. 
I'm going to jump to the other layer and I'm going to shrink it down to fit inside just the tip of the panel there, which is that end polygon. That is good enough for this. Did you notice there when I turned off transparency on that top layer, which is the PNG guide that uh, comes out of Blender? It has a uh, semi-transparent texture to it, so what you're seeing is not what you're getting. So it's important to occasionally turn that off and make sure that you actually like the value of the texture underneath it, and not just liking what you see through the opaque gray that uh, Blender gives you. I'm taking the time to add descriptive names to my layers because I was apparently on my best behavior for this texture tutorial. Cut out some black, uh, dirty black fuzz, that's what we'll call that today. And paste it in and shrink it down. This is what we're going to blanket the underside of the ship in, apparently. I just pointed out that uh, the very center of the bottom is in the wrong place. I'm pointing that out, by the way, I'm not fixing it right now because I'm going to fix that in Blender when we get back over there with this texture. I'll show you that in a minute. Now, after seeing what seems like 40 mouse clicks on this one bit, I finally have it in the right place. Next, I'm going to magic wand on the guide texture to select that center bit, which at the moment doesn't have any uh, polygons on it. I'm going to wiggle its brightness and contrast to darken it up a bit to make it more contrasty. And when I apply that properly in a few minutes in Blender, you'll see that uh, that makes all the difference. And by all the difference, I mean a little bit of difference, but we're at the end. Now we're going to deal with the engine, I'd imagine, since that seems to be all that doesn't have texture. Different black, messy thing with some texture to it, and I will find it eventually by clicking through all the windows. Oh, I didn't open it. Let's go open this other texture. Ooh, it's like a leopard print thing. But uh, it won't look like that once it's applied to the engine. Copying and pasting that bit, scaling it down. Dragging it into place. I'm going to go grab a bit of this grungy metal texture to use for the ridges on the engine nozzle. Shrinking it down as much as I can here. Making sure we cover all the ridges, but nothing else. We're going to have to do a bit of cutting out. The lasso tool, fantastic tool for making a giant mess. Set the numbers and deleting it, and then I'm going to delete a few extra bits that got outside their lane. I'd be more precise with the lasso tool the first time I wouldn't have to do this. Always make sure you're on the right layer before you try to delete things. 
that looks pretty good there. Even give it a bit of descriptive name. And I'm going to colorize it to make those ridges on the bear on the bell of the engine nozzle. Orange. I'm going to turn off the dye texture to see what orange I actually made. And that actually looks okay. So here we are. We're going to save this as a Targa TGA. I already tried once and failed, and it's terrible, but it gives me something to write over. You would have to type a file name and Targa here. So I'm jumping back into Blender to double check this. Turn to texture mode, and oh, that's not what we just created. So let's load it. Not there. Under image, we're going to open image or load image. Select the image. You see the object I was currently editing just gets up updated because it assumes you wouldn't have opened an image and didn't want to use it. The shroud didn't, so we'll have to assign that here in just a second. We select the polygons of the image, and then there in the left, on the bottom left, you just select the name of the image, and there you go. So let's go to the shroud, I would imagine, and do this next. Okay, I just want to marvel at my work for a moment. Selecting it, and selecting the image. There you go, the shroud has the correct caution. This is a shroud texture. As you can see there, the shroud is uh, overrunning a little bit. There's that white bar at the top. That's caused because my texture doesn't quite fill all the UVs. And we had that polygon we wanted to fix. So, let's see which one of those things I deal with first. Oh, I was worried about that, so I'm going to select the UV and drag it around. See here we can edit the whole UV map after we have created the texture and loaded it in. It's a two-way process. We frequently will move back and forth many times, adjusting the image, adjusting the UV map, adjusting the image, adjusting the UV map. It's a process that, and I guess I want to show off that you could drag that anywhere on the image. It doesn't have to be that part. So if you have a moment where you think, Oh, you know, I wonder what that part would look like with the same texture as this other part. You can just drag its UVs over there and take a look at it before you jump to Photoshop and correct it that way. So apparently I'm not going to fix that little bit on the shirt. I'll just say it was okay. That annoys me now. I should have either squished the UVs or jumped back in Photoshop and enlarged the texture a bit, but okay. I'm going to export the FBX. When you export FBX, you uh, create a file that Unity can use. You, know, you can import a blend file from Blender directly, but it doesn't... Uh... Oh, I changed my mind about that. I'll tell you what I'm doing in a second. But uh, I like using FBX because it handles the animations smoother than Blender. Whatever is at the center origin, this is what I was doing just now, whatever is at the origin, the 0, 0, 0 mark in Blender, that is the center of mass of your object. Uh, you can adjust it in Unity, but it's easier just to get it right here. So I'm dragging the whole thing up to put the center of mass where I want it. So whereas before, the very top center of my piece was at 0, 0, 0. Now I'm dragging it up to the center of mass somewhere inside the fuel tank. That's a more realistic place for the center to be because, well, that's how mass works. I'm going to do spinning around and marvel at it some more. Okay, that's about it. Now I'm going to export the FBX. There's some options in the FBX export window. Uh, one of them is selected objects. If you have a busy file with a bunch of pieces, you built a rocket with several stages and put it all together, you can check that checkbox, and I think I'll wave the mouse over it. Yep, right there, selected objects. That would allow you to export only selected objects, so you can make several different exports. Also, you'll see baked animations. I've turned on the two beneath it, NLA and all actions. I've turned off. 
Uh, if I were expert animations, that, those would be important checkboxes to check, but uh, they're not today. I thought I did them anyway just to show you where they were. 